this is a rough game. Um, I don't think there's any way to really cut around it. Um, if you don't feel upset after this game, you really shouldn't call yourself a Jets fan because this is one of those games I like to call, you know, the loss that really stings the most. That you know just follow you for a while because the Jets, in my opinion, didn't really play that bad of a game. Yeah, the defense at times allowed a little bit too much uh, offensive pressure from the Flames, but you could say the same thing about the Flames defense, right? And you could say that the Jets offense was playing pretty good at times. The third line and the bottom six played really well. The defense, in my opinion, was very solid. And I'm not even starting to get into the fact that Logan Stanley scored his first career NHL goal with an absolute snipe. I'm going to actually show it on screen because it's such a beautiful first NHL goal that I just, you guys have to see it if you didn't already. A beautiful, beautiful goal by Logan Stanley. Really happy to see him finally get one. I've been saying it in almost every game review that he's going to be due to get one eventually. And it's interesting because the more and more Stanley has success, the more other people starting to get on this hype train or weird train that there seems to be within the Jets fan base of let it lead, exposing Dylan DeMello and protecting uh, Logan Stanley. And I'm going to be making a video talking talking about my thoughts on that, but I think it's very strange to be jumping the gun on Dylan DeMello because although I haven't been that impressed with him this season, he's still a very serviceable defenseman. So, interesting discussion point there that I think is starting to develop within the fan base, but I'm not as against as it as some other people are, but I think that there's a different good argument for both sides. But he had a great game today, Logan Stanley, and Dylan DeMello did too, not in my opinion. And I just like the way the defense played for most of this because when you look at almost all the go goals that were scored, a lot of this was on Brossois, and I could just make a 10 minute long video of me talking about how this was, in my opinion, Brossois' worst game as a Winnipeg Jet, and definitely by far his worst game of the season so far. This was a game that I would have expected to see him from Brossois last year, where he had that really kind of struggling year in between his first year and his second year, um, compared, I should say, the difference between his first year and second year, as we all know, wasn't that great. And this was kind of, you know, more reminiscent to him in his second year with the team. He has been very, very good this year, getting a shutout against the Canucks, just being very consistent and a very good backup for us for almost the whole season and then for him to come into a game like this against the Flames in a back-to-back -back situation where the Jets did get a lot of good bounces yesterday that helped propel them to that win but nonetheless I thought that they still played a pretty good complete game and then in this game as well I thought they played a pretty good game on both ends of the ice but just goaltending killed them. This was one of those classic Jets games where, you know, back in the day with Pavlik or even Hutchinson or any of the situations we have, Al Montoya, going back to when the Jets really didn't have a goaltending option and the team played pretty decently in front of their goaltender, but they just couldn't get the win because of bad goaltending and this was exactly what that game felt like to me. A vintage Winnipeg Jets performance since them returning to Winnipeg and I, I just, it's hard to be, have a lot of positives to talk about because of how bittersweet this game is because every positive I could say about this game and how every, you know, time the Jets in my my opinion did something pretty good it just led to a chance where I almost had no faith in the Jets own end because of Brossois not being able to make a lot of saves and the weird thing was is that although Brossois did cost the Jets there's no doubt a lot of the goals that went in today especially that last goal they definitely shouldn't have been goals that were scored very bad plays are really just bad reads and not a good professional type of play you want to see from a goaltender at the NHL level no excuses there but you can't deny that Lauren Brossois made some amazing saves in this game that kept the game close for as long as it was and it could have really gotten out of hand if Lauren Brossois didn't make some of those clutch saves that he did. So although he did cost us the game, I'm going to give credit to where credit is due. He did make some really good key saves, you know, in the, stre the stretches at times that kept this game close. It just, unfortunately, the more that he let these bad goals in, the more it got away from the club. I liked the pressure that the Jets had in the last, like, three minutes of that game, four minutes of that game of the third. I thought they had a lot of good pressure, and I thought they could have scored. Um, they had really good goaltending by Mark Markstrom, and the Flames just did a really good job of protecting the crease. They really, you know, collapsed in around the goaltender and around the slot, and they kept the puck out of a lot of the dangerous plays, and, you know, credit to where credit is due. I liked the Flames in the last part of that game, and I thought that they were able to really get themselves the win and bail out their goaltender and also scratch that I realize it's not Jacob Markstrom it was David Ritchie that played in tonight and honestly that kind of just says it even more that they played de pretty decent defensively the Flames because David Ritchie hasn't had that great of a season so far and in my opinion he stood on his head tonight for the Flames and had a pretty good performance for them so you know credit to where credit is due as I like to say but other than that I just wasn't really impressed with some elements of this game offensively that I want to talk about I've talked a lot about in my opinion how that top line doesn't really you know play good defense and in my opinion Stastny plays great great defensively. Wheeler, you know, not for lack of trying, is trying to be defensively better. You know, he's still not the greatest, but he's trying. You can see the difference between how Shifley plays defense and how Wheeler plays defense. Wheeler actually tries, you know, he's just not the best, but he does put a lot of effort in. Shifley is the exact opposite. He did, it barely feels like he puts any effort
effort because that um, first goal that went in off the uh, the Flames got, Shifley just needs to catch up to that play. And if he's able to catch up to that play and he doesn't leave that much space, I think that that goal could have been prevented. He was just so slow to catch up to the play and get in front of the net to cover his man that it really cost the Jets because they were playing, you know, short, covering the kind of uh, guys that are in that slot and around that dangerous zone around the net. And that really killed the Jets, I felt like, at that time because I, the second line wasn't that great either. I've been thinking it for a while now that the second line of uh, Connor with Dubois and Ehlers, Dubois and Ehlers play very well together at times, but Kyle Connor just doesn't really f gel on that line, I feel like, and he kind of slows down the other two at times. It just felt like I just didn't like the second line. I wanted to see a little bit more line juggling going into that third with that second, uh, with the top six especially. I think there might be some line changes going into the next game on Monday against the Flames. I wouldn't be surprised if the top six looks a little bit different. And honestly, I'd like to see Mason Appleton on that second line with Apple with uh, Dubois, Ehlers, and Appleton coming in there. I think that that would be a really good line for the Jets. I think you could balance out a uh, really good third line with Lowry and Kopp and even uh, Kyle Connor. I think that that could be a really good scoring line because Kyle Connor doesn't drive play and Kopp and Lowry drive play, in my opinion, pretty well at times, especially when they have the pressure in the boards and they have good control of the puck in the uh, offensive zone. I think that having a really good sniper like that and, you know, dangler on that hard, you know, gritty, slow type of playing line could be an interesting, you know, look for this team. I would be more, I wouldn't be opposed to seeing them try something like that going forward because I just think that second line to be shuffled up a little bit we've seen how good the third line has been for the last few games and even the bottom line playing very well at times again they didn't play that much when you look at this uh, time on ice that they had um, the Jets, obviously, I just they, they weren't it wasn't the greatest amount of time on ice as usual, and I've been saying that a lot. I want to see the Jets get more time on attack with that fourth line and just be more of a presence with that fourth line because they've played very well, and I just don't feel like they should be rewarded with 10 minutes a game like they have been. I'm pulling up the exact amount of time today, and exactly almost 8 minutes played for Nate Thompson, 8 minutes and 48 seconds for Lewis, and 9 minutes and 20 seconds for Matthew Perot. In my opinion, that top line, should, that bottom fourth line should be playing around 11 minutes, I think, a game, maybe even 12. I think they've been very good, and that's even with Nate Thompson getting a assist tonight on that goal from Logan Stanley. So why not promote them a little bit more and see what they can do? Appleton obviously getting a goal as well. I just think that there could be more, you know, better usage of the minutes being dispersed between the bottom uh, two pair lines, I should say, because they're both playing very well, especially that third line. The fourth line's been showing a lot of grit and merit as well, and they also have been putting up decent numbers for a fourth line that only plays eight minutes a game. So I think increasing the play of all three of those guys might be a better thing for this club moving forward down the long run, not relying so much on your first three lines and working that fourth line a little bit more. But I like the way they've been playing. I want to see them rewarded more. And I just, like I said, top sh changing the top six a little bit, shuffle just a little bit of it, I think, with that second line. The first line isn't as much of an issue, but the second line is, so shuffle that around a little bit, and I think that this could be a really good team moving forward um, with that type of consistency if we can get a better, you know, dynamic playing top uh, line right now, especially with the way the second line plays. They just haven't been that great. You know, they've had their moments where they've shown that they're very good, but they're not consistent, and I want the Jets to be more consistent moving forward. And this is a game where I thought if they were a little bit more consistent, they could have won, but at the same time, it's really hard to come back and score and win when your goaltender gives up the goals he did, especially that Josh Levo goal where he wasn't able to, to put, get in his pad to shore up that post side of the, po the post, obviously, and if he left that corner of the net unprotected, Levo stuffs it in. Um, the Manjapani goal was brutal, and so was the Bennett goal as well in the fourth or third, obviously, excuse me. But other than that, I liked the way the team played. I thought that they had a good game. It just is a bitter, bittersweet game because it's hard to focus and be positive about the positives when you have the goaltender, Lauren Brassois, give up the goals he did that kind of cost this team because, you know, it's hard to really play good hockey when your goaltender shoots your entire club in the foot. And this is just one of those games where, unfortunately, if Hellebuck is in, I think that the Jets win this game. I think they really do. Um, I think it's much closer, at least, especially in that third period. So... Lauren Brassois, this one's kind of on you tonight. You've been great for us this season, but it's okay to have a bad game, but you hate to see it, especially when the Jets are really kind of pushing for that top spot in the North Division. Right now, they currently sit tied for, I, wait, I believe that's still, yeah, tied for uh, second place. I believe those standings are updated, if I'm not mistaken. So I want to see them get, you know, they're tracing the Leafs. They're two points behind the Leafs now for that top spot. So Edmonton's right, right there behind us with 43, and Calgary's at 35. So it's not as dangerous for the standings, what you know, might think of, because everyone's really close within that top three. And after that, Montreal's got 37, so they're not even really that close still. So, you know, the Jets need to win these more games. And it's okay to lose a back-to-back -back game every once in a while, especially considering they put up a good amount of work and they did not show up in my opinion so 
it's not the worst game, but it's still a hard one to swallow, and I think that they will be better on Monday, and Monday, I think, is going to be a really good game, like the rubber match between these three, these two clubs after the two games so far, taking one each, and it's going to be a good game on Monday against the Calgary Flames. All I want to see from this team after this loss is take away the way you've been playing the last few games against the Canucks, against the Flames, these two first two games of this series, and go in and play your brand of hockey to the best you can, and hopefully just get a better goal to the performance from Connor Hellebuck on Monday. If you get that, I think it's going to be a very entertaining game, and I think that they could easily bounce back and get another win against the Flames on Monday. Let me know your thoughts though now guys in the comment section below as always. I want to know all your thoughts about this game. If you're a Calgary fan, if you're a Jets fan, all your thoughts down in the comment section below as always. If you're a fan of hockey or a fan of the Winnipeg Jets or more importantly a fan of hockey regardless of the team that you root for, definitely consider dropping a subscription as we're trying to push towards that 1k mark and I do appreciate any of the support you guys can give me and choosing to subscribe really does help the channel grow. So thank you so much if you choose to do so and you're enjoying the content. It means a lot. Thank you. Turn on notifications if you haven't already. Follow my Twitter link in the description. Peace, love, and positivity as always, guys. I will see you guys on Tuesday after we discuss that game against the Calgary Flames on Monday, so hopefully it's a win we'll be talking about after a bounce back because I really want to have a bounce back win after this game because it was brutal. Peace, love, and positivity as always. I will see you guys in the next video. Go Jets, go. Bye-bye.